I was, I suppose, about eight or nine, I'm not sure. Um, and my mother took me to see this afternoon performance of the Ballet Russe de Monte Carlo, which uh, used to tour in those days and pass through Milwaukee. And I had never seen a ballet or didn't really know what to expect. And um, we were sitting very, very high up in the balconies, the highest balcony, furthest away from the stage. And when the music started, the curtain opened, and then uh, a, a woman, a ballet, ballerina, entered in a pink costume and began to dance. It was the ballet, it was Coppelia. And I was so fascinated because I only knew dance from musical films in which they would dance for a time and then they would stop and they would start to talk and have a dialogue, which I hated. And I was just watching this performance, praying that they would not stop dancing and start talking. And of course they didn't, which I found absolutely wonderful. I, I think it, it, uh, you can learn a lot about the hand work, the, the craft of, of putting a ballet together, of composition. You can learn those things. I don't think you can learn or force uh, inspiration. I think it is something that you receive. I think that the possibility to receive it is, is uh, part of your vocation, being called to, to this particular uh, profession. And I think it, it can be, it, it, it can come in different ways. Sometimes something you read will um, inspire you to, to imagine a possibility of translating that work into another visual form. Sometimes it's simply music, which when you hear, um, immediately makes you want to move, immediately uh, helps you to feel shapes within that music. There can be certain themes which I find interesting, but I don't use um, until I feel that I'm really ready, until the things come together. A story that I find interesting, but I don't have the music for it. And years and years later, I will find the music and say, oh yes, now I can put these things together and can make a ballet out of that. I think also in, in Japanese art, but I think that coming to Japan the first time in 1986 and discovering and experiencing the no theater and the kabuki, there are elements in this oldest, but in a sense most modern theater form that can be assimilated, not copied, but assimilated. That means the inspiration which I receive is not copied one to one in something I do, but perhaps becomes a part of me. And I think there are uh, very special elements of a special timing, a sense of minimalism in the, in particularly in the, the no theater, the use of transformation the, the relationship to a spiritual dialogue. No place always have to do with spirits, with, with ghosts, with monsters, um, with uh, the relation between our life now and another life after death or, or our destiny. And, and those are certainly the aspects, I think, which I have tried to absorb and which I believe in different forms, in different works, uh, can be recognized. Seven Haiku of the Moon, as well as uh, Seasons, the Colors of Time. I, I was impressed by, first of all, the, the poetry dedicated to the moon. Um, I used the music of Johann Sebastian Bach primarily because it's very interested that Interesting that the poet Basho and Bach, whose name is so similar, lived at the same time and looked at the same moon. So I, I put them together in a sense. And I think this is the most important message I would like to give to young people. I believe that they must 
be creative, meaning they must not only attempt from the outside to try to copy um, models of dancers that they find good, they may find them good, but they must learn to be themselves and they must learn through their dance to be able to say something about themselves. They must put their now, their present tense into the work that they do because this is, is what's valuable. Otherwise we have just a system of copying what has been done before, maybe in a perf perfect way, but still for me it, it's not interesting. Uh, interesting as an artist is the uniqueness and the specialty, the specialness of each individual person.